What is up, everyone? Welcome to the No Life Tech Show. We got a little show for you today. We got some news, some interesting news here. We're going to talk about some Space Force. We're going to talk about uh, these, this tech tuber drama that has popped up in the last week about how they make their money and how they are charging people <laughs> at, at Computex to visit their booth. Are, uh, you, are you serious? Do you really believe that? I will get into that. We'll get into that. Oh God! Uh, and then uh, some other some other short news. First thing I want to talk about is my Belkin Thunderbolt Three Hub. All right, are you ready for this, dude? No. Click into your seatbelt. I bought this awesome all-in-one Thunderbolt Three Hub. So what I did was I took my gaming oh, PC from the office. I was I was kind of getting really excited. I thought you it actually clicked into your seatbelt for a second. Oh no no. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I took my gaming PC, it is here, this is my apartment, it's at my apartment. I missed PC gaming at home, right? So I wanted, I've been trying to figure out a way to do it, you know, and I was like, I'm just bringing it home and I'll set up the MacBook station at work. So I brought this here, that means my, at my work, uh, I need to hook up a shitload of stuff to my laptop. And I bought this Belkin, this Belkin hub. So I can hook up my 4K monitor, I can hook up my webcam, I can hook up a hard drive, I can hook up my uh, Focusrite Scarlet, can hook up my um that's pretty much it. oh and a gigabit ethernet uh cable all into this one thing and then one cable out into my laptop which is the best part about it it's just just one little cable gets hooked up to the laptop i sit down plug it in real quick and then i can get going and when i'm ready to leave i pop it right out it's awesome guess how much money it was mm, 60 300 dollars it was a $300 hub, dude. Dude, I wouldn't have bought Belkin then, I guess. Because there are... The, that, no, was the, any... that was the cheapest one. All right. Because I have seen, I've been seeing a lot of cooler USB-C hubs coming out. But, oh. It's not Thunderbolt, though. I was just going to say, yeah, no, it's it's they're they're all going to run 30 hertz. That's right. why. Yeah. Right. So I was yeah. like, you know what? I could either buy a Razer fucking laptop do that whole thing and then have an extra home theater pc but that would cost me three grand or i can have a janky sort of just plug everything into my laptop sort of thing with these like janky hubs that i do um, have or i just spend the 300 bucks get a okay. nice hub and then just connect to one and then it's all are you it's all powered over thunderbolt then because it's actually thunderbolt okay yeah so you don't have to run extra power too then yeah yep i run an ec that has a dci in on it as well that yeah it's I was gonna say it. Ha yeah, that, once you start having that stuff, you gotta have powered. Because like I have learned that over time, like it's too much. Yeah, no, do you just like never? I don't. I just honestly, I don't buy any hubs or even USB things if they don't have extra power. Because yeah. most of the stuff I do want to plug into them is you know exactly. It's it's a mixer and a webcam and a mic and you know everything else. It's like yeah, you're not you're not getting that power over USB, dude. Right. But after I bought it and I hooked everything up. I hooked up, like I said, all that shit is hooked up to it. And then I even have, I even had a keyboard and a, a wired mouse hooked up to it at first. And then I replaced them with a wireless version, but I hooked all yeah. that shit up. I was like, there's no way this is going to be able to run all of this as well as my SSD drive at full speed. But it does. It's really good. Yeah. It does. And I was like, this is Thunderbolt 3 is the yeah, future. No. That's a future port right there. And I was actually well, super happy about it. Yeah, no, it is like, uh, yeah. USB-C Gen 2 slash Thunderbolt. Like, I mean, it's it's 10 gigs. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's more than enough to run all of that, which is why it's awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. Now you're paying for it for sure. You're definitely paying for it. Well, the you're paying for it now. Like, that's... Right. I do, I do, like, that's why I'm kind of happy Apple did do that, even though it is annoying, because it's like, no, I've been... I mean, I'm sitting here with a Pixel. I've been definitely on the, like, every, everything needs to be USB-C. Yeah. I just want everything to be USB C and like, especially if you can get start getting Thunderbolt and Gen 2. Like, right. yeah. Cause USB C's are so much nicer. Yeah. It really is, man. And, and it runs at SSD full power. And then they yeah. have this other, there's this. And if you do full Gen 2, you can, you can literally put it in an NVMe drive. Cause that's what I have is like one of my extra boot drives. Yeah. So I just have like a little USB and that's what I run all of my Linux distros off of. Right. If you actually have Gen 2, like it, it runs at full speed. Yeah. And like, it's got an extra Thunderbolt yeah. port on the on the drive that's open right now. So I can put a fucking I can put like a Windows boot drive on there and boot yeah. into boot camp off of that. Um it's actually really dope. The thing is though, is um 
there's this NAS drive that Apple sells. I don't know if Apple sells it, but it's part of the, their ecosystem where it's a, it's a NAS, but it also has all of that stuff as well. So now I'm like, shit, maybe I should have bought that version because then it has the hard drive in it, but I might buy that down the line. Who knows when it gets cheaper? Because that one was like 700 bucks, dude. Um, no joke. Yeah. I'd just, I'd just run like free NAS or open NAS. Yeah, well, I, uh, um, it was the enclosure that was really sold me. The fact that okay, it comes yeah, with all right. that stuff in there. Yeah, no, like that would that'd be pretty cool. Otherwise, I would, like if you just do that, yeah, just open NAS or free NAS. They're both BSD based. They'll run, they'll like run plug and play with Mac and everything fine. Yeah, and I was also thinking I get a fucking um, uh, external GPU, and then I could plug that into the Belkin drive and still run it off of one cable. But then I was thinking maybe I'll just run another one to another port just so it gets the full thing out of it. Yeah, um, I'd probably do that if you're also running hard drives off it. If you have a Thunderbolt 3 port, dude, I, I do rec and you want to hook everything up to it, I do recommend it because it does make it uh, for clean and easy. Hell yeah. Oh, right. yeah. No, that does sound nice. Any other, uh, you, buy, you buy anything or use anything recently you want to talk about? Nah, not really. Oh, I've mostly, mostly just been working and like deciding what things I'm going to buy from E3. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> um i also bought that the, an apple a black apple keyboard it's nice that's all i could say about that i want to get a fucking one of those uh what was the keyboard that we were talking about last night uh, uh, ha- happy hacker happy hacker keyboard so yeah, getting one yeah. of those i need a nice yeah. i need to replace this ducky here this is a dope keyboard and it's been through a lot but I want I want a ten keyless. Actually, I want a sixty percent keyboard. I don't even want a ten keyless anymore. I want something super I want, small. I, I um I thought of that for a long time, but I've learned I just want ten key. I I want my, I, I can't I can't live without arrow keys, basically. Yeah, I don't need them. I don't need them. Yeah, don't, if you don't need them, go for it. Yeah. I realize how far my arms go like this when I'm he- sitting on this keyboard. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I want them like that. <laughs> really is the only. No, I, yeah, I get that. Like 60 percent are nice. It's just like I would run a sixty percent for gaming every day. Yeah. But not for coding. Yeah. I'm typing like, too. I yeah. really need it. I don't really need any other extra key. All right, let's get into some some news. First thing we're talking about is the tech tubers and the money situation. So first time I heard about this, it was a Jay's two cents video. Same right here. And he's like, "The truth, how I earned my money," and I was like, "Why did you make this video?" And then I saw all of the drama that came afterward. Um, and now, this is the thing. We know all. We already know that that they don't. They're not going to risk their channel and their reputation on taking money from a company in for a, a good review or for exposure or anything like. That. Yeah. Well, it's it's that too, but it's all of the. All of the people who were apparently alleged for doing this, I thought it was really funny because like the biggest reason why a lot of those people are respected is because they actually follow like copyright laws and FCC laws. Like say, (gasps) hey, dude, this is a sponsored review and make it really fucking blatantly obvious like you're supposed to. Right. So I think I just thought it was funny. Yeah. And then I think the the big thing that came out of this was someone wrote a tweet, some like random dude. I don't even know why they even responded to it. I was very surprised about that. But some random um, dude was like, "Hey, these are all the people charging for for time at their booths at Comitex." Right. Okay, yeah. To get into it, basically, I can find that t- that tweet. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's deleted. Don't worry, oh, okay. it's, it's it's long gone. Uh, no, a this this uh smaller YouTuber, tech tuber levied a lot of these allegations against i want to say like eight of the bigger youtubers like uh linus tech tips hardware canucks uh bitwit um gamers next paul's paul's hardware gamers nexus i think there might have um hardware unbox or um, unbox dude unbox therapy i think like a lot of the really big ones and then the smallest one was uh gamers nexus but it was all, it was just it was kind of funny with the first time I saw it because it was just like yeah I don't don't think so because like half of those people are like 
I mean, they're 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 tech. They're they're the definition of like tech guys, where they're really anal about everything. So it's like they're they're like the last people I could actually see running a scam. <laughs> yeah, I definitely Basically. don't. I definitely don't think that they're they're charging people for their their time at a booth. But that being said, that being said, I think it would be naive to think that a sponsor like Nvidia or a sponsor like Corsair or a sponsor like NZXT, these big hardware sponsors, I think it would be naive to think that that doesn't just initially sway them immediately. So they're not going to immediately start like if a, like just some random product gets dropped on their desk and they happen to review it, they're going to be completely unbiased. But when it comes to one of those sponsors, they're going to be very careful about what they say. Now they might not color yeah, it. Think, they they might not, you yeah. know, completely you well, know. I think I think for some it. of them too, yeah. Well, it's also I mean, and there isn't to an extent there most of them are pretty transparent <laughs> about that too cuz all, all of them pretty much except like, I think Gamers Nexus were like, yeah, we got sponsored to go to Computex. It's on the front of every single video. And it's like, yes, yeah, so of course, yeah, those those three companies, they got paid to go to their booth, sure, because right. they sponsored the trip. And yeah. I think there's that's a big difference. Yeah. And like, that's not really paying them to come to your booth. Right. Anytime you say this is a spawn, this, anytime you do a video where it's like this spot, this video is sponsored by this, then that, to me, that immediately says whatever you say in here is basically an advertisement. You know what I mean? Right. Until they take that, they can have a sponsored ad in the beginning and then do it on a completely different product. And then I'm like, okay, this is an objective thought. Well, and yeah, and that, I, that's why actually some of them, like, I mean, Linus Tech Tips, he, like uh, anything like that, he legitimately calls it a commercial. Yeah, he doesn't even attempt really. to say it's unbiased, you know what I mean? So that's why some of that's like really funny to me. Where it's like, holy shit, you say, you mean the thing, the ad he's doing that he calls a commercial, he's getting paid for it? Really? Yeah, I, I, I can. I bet you it gets tricky, man. I bet you it gets tricky because I'm sure they get products all the time where it's just a piece of shit. And if they're if they're being paid by this company in some sort of way, whether it's through a product or it's through just ex, not exposure but just communication, you know, I, not necessarily yeah. money, but it's payment and other beneficial areas to them. Like exclusive access is huge for a channel, you know, and you don't right. want to fuck that up. Well, then it's, yeah, but I mean, it, it's also, it depends on the people too. Cause I think like, that's why I give a lot of respect to, uh, gamers Nexus, you know, they used to, they used to have those back channels with uh, cooler master, cooler master put out a case and they, uh, they didn't necessarily trash it, but they kind of trashed it and turned it into a joke and cooler master didn't talk to them for like seven months, like refused yeah. to. And honestly, that's why he's one of the smaller channels. In my opinion, he's a better, way better channel than Jay's two cents. I think he's, yeah. I think he's one of the worst ones, in my opinion. Um, and that's not nothing against him. I just, I, no, I, I think uh, he's just a better channel to watch, and he's more objective about the shit, you know. Yeah. But that's not gonna that because he doesn't have the access that Jay well, has like, well, or the also, money, you know. Well, it's partially that too, but it's also you got to think about what they're what they're trying to do for me most of jay's stuff is an ed jay's an education channel not a review channel you know what i mean mostly so like it used to be a review channel but it kind of changed yeah like it, it's one of those things too where it's just like how much do you do is it is it actually like a hardcore are you labeling it as a hardcore review or are you just like right. this exists you're right you know what i mean i tell you what i think line is i think line is you know, a lot of people give him shit, but he does rip shit apart when it needs to be ripped apart. And he doesn't give a fuck if it's NVIDIA or if it's Corsair. He tells it yeah. like it is. Like his whole Razer fiasco. He bought everyone in the fucking office Razer. He loved Razers. And then they all started breaking. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, dude, these products are fucking trash. They all broke. So, I, I mean, mean, but he has, uh, he has the revenue, I think, to be able to do that. It's yeah. I think well, the more the people you really gotta worry about are the ones that are starting up, right? That, that would be more tempted to give a good review to a product because now they are gonna be able to get more access to other products, you know? Yeah. Well, it's yeah, it's that, and like 
so most most of them that were apparently called out in that tweet and stories because someone else wrote a story about it too was uh it was it was also kind of definitely interesting because it was like almost all of them have enough revenue streams that they don't they don't need to care right it's like even gamers nexus you know oh. like they are the they're the smallest youtube channel but they have the biggest website out of any of them and like have always been doing they've had a a pretty good reporting website for like eight years and that's actually i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if that's how they make most of their money through that and patreon because they have a really good reporting website not the youtube yeah that was the thing that jay was saying is that you know it's all about how they split the revenue streams up uh, ads is like a very little part of it all which makes sense yeah. and that's why i think a lot some of those around there they don't do reviews so much like they'll right. kind of do review they'll kind or they'll they'll they they review, review a product that they know is good right they review a lot less things you know what i mean a lot more of it is just entertaining content or education co content like a new cpu comes out and it's it's a review in a sense of like this is what it is and this is what my benchmarks are but not like oh this is really super good or super bad you know what i mean yep so i think it i think it depends on what kind of channel the person's going for and at the same time like even if this was completely true like so what to me i don't know they're they're, they're an en entertainment channel on youtube like they're trying to make money like who fucking cares the only person it would really hurt would be gamers nexus if that if that happened to be true i think that, oh, would, yeah. that would be the only person it would hurt because lion like you said lioness and jay and i mean even hardware canucks a little bit even though they are a review channel they're you're really more just looking you want to look at the products you know you're not really no you don't really care too much about their thoughts on the products just want to see how they interact with them what the what it looks like you know, hopefully they tell you something that you don't know about it but something like gamers nexus where he goes deep into shit and he's very critical if it were to ha if it were to come out that he was getting paid for reviews or whatever, that would be more devastating to him than anything else. But that's why yeah. they don't do it. It would I, I I it would have to be the price of their entire channel plus their entire revenue stream for that year forever. So add yeah. all that up in order for them to risk all of that on one on one product. So if a company's yeah. not offering that, there's no point for them to do it financially. Exactly. Like, it, I don't know. I think a lot of it's just coming from. It's coming from a yeah. troll, really. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's coming from a troll. And I'm telling you, you got to watch out for the smaller channels, the ones that are starting up. They're the ones that are more likely to give colored reviews because they want that access. They want more products coming in. You know? So they're going to do whatever they can to get that there. And if some, like of, us. some of them are. Yeah, like us. <laughs> don't trust any review that we talk about. <laughs> Fucking ARMS is the best game ever, dude. <laughs> Go buy it now. All right, uh, moving on. Yeah. So this is a this is an interesting story. It kind of leads to tech. Uh, I don't know if you know this. Who Elizabeth yeah. Holmes is? No, I've, I've I've seen this on and off for the last year and a half or so. Yeah, I just got finished reading in this book, Bad Blood, and I highly recommend you read it. You're you're gonna love this book, dude. But she was just indicted on criminal charges. She's the uh, the ex CEO of Theranos, which was this kind of tech health company that created these products which essentially would diagnose issues that you had as well as administer the right drug to you with only just a drop of blood it was a very yeah. hoity-toity you know futuristic idea and she has a, an, a it's a great idea but she couldn't yeah, make no it it's fruition. like if you could actually execute that idea you just you'd be you save you saved the health industry right so, like you completely revolutionized it right so ima ima that's what the book is so interesting because imagine Imagine if the company actually did that. Well, that's what Theranos did, except they didn't have a product that actually did that. Worked. So they were yeah, able yeah. to get billions of dollars from people like Warren Buffett and fucking all these big time investors. And she's on the cover of Time Magazine and Fortune Magazine. Silicon Valley's going crazy. She wears a black turtleneck because she tries to be like Steve Jobs all the time, but she doesn't have an actual product. So it was super interesting to see how she was able to maneuver oh, no, for well, years. Right, and well, that's how they are. That's why she has criminal charges against her. Yeah, is mostly based off investment, but it was part part of that was basically 
faking a lot of shit. Like they would have people come in and like supposedly get the procedure, you know, they would like prick them and like then have someone like run in the back and just make up bullshit. And then like, here's your diagnosis. Well, what they did was they bought, they bought machines that did do the lab tests. So when they, yeah. they would get the, ra- the lab results and then run them on those machines, not their own machines. They only had like a prototype machine that actually sort of worked. Uh, but it didn't, it didn't work at all. Not how they expected it. But they would use that to get money from the investors. Um, and this is, the, this is the thing that's fucked up about this country. So she's being indicted not on the harm that she did to all the consumers, right. but actually yeah, on fucking over money. already billionaires. You know yep. what I mean? Nope, it's because you lied to investors. Yeah, that's this country for you. You know, fuck all the consumers and all the people that had all these crazy health scares and ran to the hospital because they thought their fucking oh, no, food they actually, levels were through the roof. Yeah, because she actually like had it in hospitals and stuff like that too. Well, like, she, she like had it. She she had she had them somewhere, and then she had a, a big rollout in a Walgreens. Walgreens yeah, was like partnered she with her. Had to get rid of it, obviously. Yeah, and Walgreens. <laughs> everyone at Walgreens like these don't even work. And then finally, the CEO of Walgreens loved her. She was very charismatic. She was like a new Steve Jobs. Everyone in Silicon Valley wants a Steve Jobs. She kind of put that image out there and got all these dudes wrapped around her finger. And then she fucking stole all their money. But now she's worth zero dollars, according to uh, the Forbes list. And uh, she's probably, she probably won't go to jail, but she's definitely going to be fined pretty heavily. And supposedly she's, gonna, she's, she's looking... Gonna- basically be in jail though for the rest of her life if she's not she's supposedly already getting money from investors to start a new company no i, I mean i mean that isn't like metaphorically oh yeah, yeah like yeah. she's gonna be in debt for her entire life yeah unless like, even, if, even if she has another company actually work she's still gonna like she herself is going to forever be in debt and she'll never be she'll never be that person because of this this was a huge scandal huge this is the re- this was the reason why a lot of people in silicon valley stopped funding silicon valley projects because of the theranos situation which i didn't really know about until i until i started reading that book and uh i was like holy shit man these people were it's, fooled it's that, so it's easily also, i mean it, like there's still a good amount of money but it was oh, it was sure. it was also just the whole lean startup culture for a while that yeah. was just everyone every, everyone's got a startup i i've worked for I, I lost track of how many startups because yeah. everyone and their mother had a startup. I had a startup. Yeah. You know, like. Yep. And now, uh, you know, well, nowadays it's like more like Y Combinator stuff where you just go into like incubation tanks. Yeah. Kind of that's, what they, that well, that's, that's what they kind of started switching to was, yeah, the tanks. So, I helped one of those too. <laughs> I yeah. don't know if it still exists. I <laughs> probably like, I should probably look them up. Yeah. Elizabeth Holmes, I'm I'm very interested in her story where it goes, so I'll keep you guys updated. Next, President Trump directs Defense Department to immediately begin the process of establishing dum 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 the Space Force, a sixth military branch. I think he's fucking losing his goddamn mind. <laughs> really. <laughs> I mean, it's a fucking used, cool idea. You use the word separates, but not equal about it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a cool uh, idea, but... It is, but it's also just like, didn't we already try this under Reagan? It's like, didn't you just get rid of a Space Force? You completely defunded yeah. a Space Force? But no, now fun. we're now we're going to do it better, because it's got a cool name this time. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It does have a cool name. The American U.S. Space Force? I like that. Um... I don't know. I don't know if this is ever going to come into fruition. I mean, just read that quote. We have the Air Force. We'll have the Space Force. <laughs> yeah, he said that in a fucking press conference. <laughs> and then you had fucking Mike Pence sitting there like, uh, all right, dude, I guess we're starting a Space Force now. So if you actually get it going and actually. Like, it would be sweet, but right. like it's, it's just at the same time, it's like only, only he could do it. Yeah. It's not my place to say that, like, you know, my four-year-old kid probably thought the same idea. But... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if he realizes it's going to cost a lot of money that the government's going to have to pay, which I know he doesn't like to do. So we'll see what how, what comes of it. This I just, is... I don't know, it, it, it's, it's the memes, man. 
It's the memes. Are you living in the meme culture? Dude? All right, this is awesome. The Nvidia uses AI to create a convincing slow mo video by filling in extra. See this? Yeah, kinda. This is fucking dope. So there was this company called Mixter or Flixter or something like that, and essentially what it was is it took regular 24p, 30p footage, and you could slow it down. And it would actually fill in those frames, but it was kind of janky. You would see sort of artifacting as it went yeah, by. Yeah, it was, it was like uh, when Adobe first launched uh, Content Aware, though. Right. You right. know what I mean? Like it's like okay, this is really cool for the potential, but it's right. still going to take a couple of years. Well, now Nvidia started using AI and their machine learning, and uh, you know, just the raw GPU power to and sort of do it. It's really good, and it's super convincing. I mean, yeah. they're showing uh, this racket here getting, uh, or this water balloon getting hit by a racket. And I mean, you can't tell at all that it was a tw also, 24, 60 frame per second video. Right. But it also helps, you know, that they're doing it all in high res with like good lighting. <laughs> true, true, true. Um, let me go to their actual video here. Um, like, it is it is definitely a lot nicer when your when your starting point is like, you know, slow mo guys using a red cam. Right. Then my my smartphone. Thirty six bit fucking video. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the hell the, that other footage is. But they showed they showed some other footage, um, essentially, where it they would slow it down and you would see it was blocky. Like it was it was running at like one frame every you know second, uh, and it filled in perfectly. There was one of of a car kind of drifting, and I was like, holy shit, this is actually really cool. Which hopefully we can get that technology pretty soon, and uh, have it implemented into cell phones. Because then, you know, the iPhone slow mo is not bad, but it ain't this good. It ain't oh, this yeah. good at all. Yeah, none of them are, dude. Yeah, this would be fucking awesome. And it would be after the you would have to shoot it in slow mo. You would just render it out in slow mo. Yeah, no, that's awesome. the coolest part. Yeah, yeah. Because like that, that would I mean for editing that would make things so much. That would be fantastic. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you're if you're just taking, uh, I'm, dude, it, world's a meme, dude. <laughs> It'd be so much better for making all of those hot, dramatic Instagram things. Yeah, like where you got like some crazy shit happen, then you want to zoom in and slow mo on it. There you go. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. This dope. is just the Instagram thing now. So you like, can... this is gonna take it over. <laughs> You can see here that their their original footage is at 60 frames, which is, yeah. um, you know, it does help to have those extra 30 frames in between. But for the most part, it's still pretty, pretty cool technology. All right. What else we got? Android messages send from PC. Android messages will now let you send text from your computer starting today. Um, Monday. Oh, starting Monday? No, this past Monday. Oh, last Monday. Okay, this is a, yesterday yeah, yeah. For, for two days ago. Correct. Um, have you used this at all, or could you already do it with a picture I'm book? I'm salty. Really? No, because I can't use it yet. Why not? No, you can use it on anything. Um, but it's they're still rolling it out for uh by update wise. So your your version of messages has to update. Mine hasn't yet. Ah. Oh. Trust me, for the last the last couple of days, I've been sitting here like. Probably every other hour, just like any new updates. Yep. You got, got an update for me? Wait, do you have any way to text from your PC at all? No. No, right? No, I just I don't I mean either I'm I'm I want it to try it out and honestly I'm still not gonna use it. I guarantee you you will. <laughs> I will I'll use it while working, but that's probably it. Yeah, but that's mainly whenever you're a PC, you get a text, bloop, it pops right up, you're gonna text. But I will say there was a program that I used. Um, I don't remember what the name was. I'm trying to find it here. But you had to pay twenty bucks a month to text from your PC. And it was, Hell no. It was nice I because I I used it to text from my phone, which was the Samsung at the time. But also I needed it to drop files because there's no AirDrop either. So I was like, all right, it has AirDrop and it has text to PC. I'll pay this for a couple months. I paid it for one month and it's like, fuck this. This is fucking dumb finally they're adding messaging to pc which is dope um that's what android needs man they need to fucking start adding those st sort of little features to the messages 
app to really help it out. Uh, there's a correction here in this article. Article originally said that Wi-Fi must be enabled on your Android device for web messaging to work. That's not the case. Google recommends that if you're experiencing problems with the feature, you should toggle Wi-Fi off and on again, but it also works over cellular data. Okay, little note there from The Verge. China bans ASMR videos. What? <laughs> China bans ASMR videos citing vulgar and pornographic content. Uh, of course, sure. I mean, hey, dude, just, all you got to do is look at YouTube, and I'm sure there's some. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> uh, okay, China. Sure. I mean, is this really the bulk of your issues? Come on now. I guarantee you there's one Chinese fucking politician, and he's sitting there, and he's listening to this shit, and he's getting a boner. And he's like, no, we can't allow this. We cannot allow what it is. We cannot allow what this is. And he fucking bans it. Honestly. Probably. I mean, dude, they're trying to make it so you have to have a webcam in your house. Like, do, do you not expect them to ban ASMR because of porn? How many fucking webcams are you going to have to buy? There's like 9 billion people in China. Insane. The logistics hey, don't make any sense. Lighthouse. I mean, if you're like a camera maker like Lighthouse, do you, you just score you better, the biggest. You better, you're, 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 fit, you're well off now. You better get that contract. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. We're about to start making webcams. Fuck this shit. <laughs> AT&T is already planning more acquisitions days after buying Time Warner. Yeah, I was just going to ask if you guys did this last week because I thought that was I thought that was hilarious. That was like the only things I've tweeted about like all week because I just think it's it's hilarious. You're just trying to buy everything up, dude. Well, no, it's not even that. It was like, okay, Within the day, net neutrality ended. AT and T's trying to buy CNN, and as uh, Comcast, who already owns NBC, is immediately trying to buy uh, C or Fox. And it's just, it's. I was just, I've just been laughing about like, oh, net neutrality's gone, so now everyone is buying a cable like cable company. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's just been a lot of tweets of a thinking emoji. And now eighteen. 18- <laughs> AT&T controls Warner Brothers, HBO, and Turner Broadcasting System, which um, I don't know if, if HBO being controlled by AT&T is a good thing. <sighs> probably, I don't, probably not. Uh, no, I don't ever remember it. AT&T be being like open. positive about it, but yeah, no. I don't know if at and ever been like an open telecom company, but um, I don't know. I've never had AT&T, to be honest. Like, their stuff when they were still at Bell, they did some cool projects. Like they definitely were very, they definitely did very good things for their computers in general. But like, I wouldn't still call them an open cell company at all. Right. I mean, dude. at the same time, they still have a data cap on 15 megabyte down internet. <laughs> dude, now with net neutrality being fucking gone, you're going to have to pay to play. If you're fucking HBO, or if you're any other company besides HBO and Turner and fucking Warner Brothers, if you're on AT and T, and if you're on fucking Comcast, you're gonna have to pay for HBO and all this other bullshit. Yeah, no, that's there was. There's definitely been people trying to convince people like Netflix and Amazon to become ISPs, huh. which I also think is hilarious. Because I mean, like, I I get it; it makes sense, but it's like. It's way too much fucking money. Yeah, like, and they, they have they have enough clout to just be able to push their way in any way. Right. Why would they? Exactly. They're not going to waste that much money to be an ISP. Exactly. And they do. They have no experience in being an ISP. Yeah. Well, I guess. Like the only one is like Google, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like, well, yeah, they they're not doing it more because of how much it costs, where it's just cheaper for them to basically force everyone to play ball with them yeah I, they've been trying to get fucking people internet for fucking a decade now like you can just see how much the infrastructure costs and not it's all the fucking zoning and contracting that really the cost adds up yeah not uh anything to do with net neutrality but hey yeah. <laughs> no that was also somewhat related to that that was like, dude agit pies he's just got to be a scapegoat like you he's think? just gotta be I, he's just gotta be the scapegoat i think yeah for sure you know, like yes like i think it was like yesterday or the day before he went on for uh, sure no he just went on npr and just like they interviewed him and he just started like being like well yeah no i know i know all of the people were majorly in uh 
in favor of what we we ended up doing and like the guy interviewing him's just like what <laughs> like literally said what and it's just like you know like almost like as he started the question off with uh like how does it feel to be doing the unpopular opinion or something and he's just like no i know we did like the most popular opinion like i i have tons of data on that and it's just like it's like you I, talk I to every, five every, people every, they every, all own yeah. telecom companies it was like you know how every single poll in america is saying otherwise and he's like uh well you know polls they they'll they're they're made to have a point and uh get to a certain point <laughs> it's just like the guy's answer like that was basically like what um you realize there's a lot of polls right <laughs> like, it's not that. just one poll it's like no literally every poll i gotta listen to chicken out of the fridge uh but no yeah that was that was just funny like so there's there is part of me that i think he's just he's just the poster fall boy that or he's uh or he's gonna try to do something even more and actually run for something because he also in that interview just kept talking about how uh he's been going on a u.s tour for like the last couple of months just talking to all the real people in the u.s i tell you what if net if the repeal of net neutrality actually does what he thinks it's going to do and it drives competition in there and it drives the prices down of everything and offers more services and more and then maybe we can finally get to a place where we have a la carte tv then he yeah, will I'll have people on his side then yeah, he could i'll leave my words yeah definitely but i don't see it yeah i don't know <laughs> if, i don't know man he's he's gonna be i don't know if that's gonna ever be the the way it's gonna work yeah net neutrality. like it's it's one of those well for me it's one of those things where it's like that wasn't that wasn't the root of the issue the root of the issue is we got to get every single city in the u.s to get out of this stupid contract they saw all signed like it's a, it, that's a lot more municipality problems to me than like if there's new net neutrality or not all right last couple of stories apple stories apple update blocks gray key you don't know what gray key is. It was essentially a, a phone cracking device that police were using so they could get into your phone if, you know, they needed to get in there. And uh, it's just another another little uh, cool thing that Apple does in terms of security and privacy. Hopefully they keep doing it. Just keep updating. If something can block your shit, update it. Block that hole. That way all those devices. I mean, that thing was expensive too from what I saw. I think it was like 300 bucks. You can imagine every police force bought one. Yeah. I mean, power to that. Um, there's still things they gotta fix, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's again, it's one of those things where it's like they 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 do a lot of really great things. I can't deny that. Like, and I'm not trying to, but they also they just gotta fix iCloud, dude. <laughs> Make it more like G Cloud. No, but like it's just like I'm. I'm t sometimes it does annoy me where it's like, well, yeah, we got an unhackable phone unless someone can just go to your iCloud, and then here's everything you've ever done backed up to iCloud. Oh, is it? I, is there vulnerabilities in iCloud? I haven't seen any. No, it's just them. that it's just that by default it backs up everything to iCloud. Oh yeah. Like that's how Manafort for just got into more trouble. It's because he was sending everything on his phone. It was backing up to iCloud. Yeah, definitely don't do that. All packs up the iCloud. Nope. Like, ooh, you got to make it a choice. But yeah. it is still a great system. It's just like there's little things with that. Like, that's, that was the one. Like, it was funny because back when uh, all of that stuff was first happening with the police force in Texas. Yeah. And, like, everyone was championing on them for them saying, no, we're not going to unlock the phone. They also did tell the police force, hey, if you can get into this iCloud, you still have everything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like, essentially that's that is a really all i really expect from them if they're, yeah. if they're like look we're not going to help you get in there but if you get in there then have at it we're not going to fucking help in fact we're going to block your access have a box that does it no yeah i think that's great yeah i th i thought it was interesting that someone was able to make a box like that so quickly oh, it was dude, like, as not, soon as they I'm found out as soon as they found out that police wanted something like that boom the great key was pretty much released Someone's got some zero keys or, or zero days or something. They were able to figure that out real quick. And I can imagine iOS 12 
If they're not working on security, then they're going to have the same thing happen. No, I mean, I'm sure they are. But, like, it's one of those things, too, where it's... it's that's the fun, dude. Yeah. I actually, my best friend, actually, he went to... Um, he joined the Navy last year. We are like, why are you joining? He has a degree in geology. He had a really good job. And he's like, dude, I want to start doing cybersecurity for, for the government. So he joined the Navy, and now that's what he's doing. He's actually, like, in school right now trying to, to get into a position there. And it's like... He's got like the tape on the fucking webcam and everything nowadays, dude. He's like, I see some shit, man. So I was like, all right. I guess they're trying to break in everyone's fucking shit nowadays. Yeah. That's where the money's at, right? Um, yeah. Pretty much, dude. I still don't fucking tape my webcam. I probably should. Do you tape your webcam? No. But that's also because I don't care. And my webcam's pointed a different direction anyway. I know I don't really care either, but I'm, I'm not gonna bother taping something that's pointing at a wall. I just don't want that one day to <laughs> pop up, and I'm running for president or something, and then all of a sudden I got I'm like jerking off in front of my webcam. You know what I mean? It's just somehow they got hey, that dude, shit. That's apparently not gonna stop you. <laughs> True. Good point. <laughs> Good point. Maybe we need everyone's fucking dick pics out there. That way it doesn't really matter. Yeah, dude. Just go full Leo. Yeah. Exactly. Go full Leo Laporte and just now everyone's got to live in the open. Yeah. Apple fined 6.6 .6 million after iPhones and iPads stopped working because they had third-party parts. So essentially, you would fix your, you would put a new screen in, you crack your screen, yeah. you go to someone, and then they made an update where you couldn't, uh, your do device that. didn't work, and then they fixed it, and now they're getting fined for it, which they should. Don't do that ever again. Don't do Pretty that much. ever again. 6.6 .6 million, you know, it's not very much to them, but um, it's enough to, you know, tell them to. Not do that again. I don't know why Apple has that attitude towards repair. I really don't. I, yeah, I, I'm, I I'm convinced they just think everyone's stupid. <laughs> I mean, I guess for the most part they're right though. I mean, yeah, but it's it's also just really annoying to for everyone who like is realizes it, isn't it's that stupid really easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least make it where. Like, they, their attitude towards repair is just so fucking dumb, dude. I think there was a lot of critical articles being released now in, 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 um, prior to uh, the next Apple conference coming up in September where they're going to release their hardware. Everyone needs to be very critical of Apple right now. That way we get the products we want. Um, so I, I, I'm very hopeful for this next one because I, I, I think this last WWDC was pretty good. And I think we're, uh, we're seeing well, no, in it Apple. Was, it, was, it was a definitely good WWDC. Yeah, I think we're seeing an, a good Apple. Stuff. I think they're finally starting to get aligned again back to where they should be. Kind of lost Maybe. their way a we'll little see. bit. And, but their hardware and their repair well, needs to Well, fingers crossed because there's also rumors that they might have killed the project we really wanted. I know I saw that. Yeah. I think what they're going to do is they're going to have the next iPhone. They're going to have a plus version, a standard version, and a small version. There's not going to be I'm an hoping. SC version. And now it'll yeah. be every every release will be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm I'm hoping there'll be a small version. But the rumor is also the small version might just be the regular ten. It's not, it's not, that's a good size though. Yeah, it's not too much bigger. Yeah, that's a good size. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you for listening to No Life Tech Show. We'll see you guys next week. Make sure you follow us at No Life Digital on Twitter and Instagram, and you hit up our website nolife.digital. That's where you're going to get all of our content, all of our articles, all of our reviews, everything. It all goes there. Catch you guys later. Bye!